mobile phones are opening up new kinds of businesses, ones where you can uh, order things. And Zarly is one of those where you can tell your phone you need something, like a weird cup of milk or something, and somebody <laughs> will bring it to you. Actually, somebody did that on stage when I first saw it. And we're going to talk to the CEO right now. Who are you? I'm Bo Fishback, the founder and CEO of Zarly. Uh, this is my fifth company, and I've never been a part of one like this. It's just been a rocket ship the last year. And uh, so, what is Zarly? Is it, a lot of people might have heard about it or seen it sure. in the Apple featured store this week. Yeah, yeah. Zarly is a hyper local marketplace that is driven by buyers. So, if you have the app or you go to the website, you can ask for anything you want a used car, someone to bring you something from Tartine Bakery in San Francisco, anything you want, you ask for. Um, you say how much you're willing to pay for it, and then people around you in the community, that is small businesses, it's individuals, it's college students who want to make money, uh, can see what people are willing to pay for and go and make money um, by fulfilling what, what people need. Very cool. Um, it's an interesting idea, and it sort of sounds like a t spin on Airbnb or uh, some of these other marketplaces that are, that are pop popping up and becoming popular. Yeah. But like with Airbnb, they, they told us the story of it took a thousand days before that marketplace started really working because yeah. you needed both people who had houses and mm -hmm. couches to sell as well as buyers. Right? Yep. Are you in the same spot? Yeah, I think you know marketplaces are hard in general. They're like investors and entrepreneurs who've been involved with marketplaces who will never touch them again because they're not the easiest companies in the world to build. And it's because building any startup's hard enough. Um, when you have to make two sides of a transaction happy and have a great experience, it's like extra hard. And so getting supply and demand to match, making sure that what people people get what they ask for, and making sure that people who come there to make money can actually make money, um, you got to keep all of those things balanced. And so in some ways, like we're very much like Airbnb, right? They had to get supply on board and then drive demand to that supply. We just have to do it for every possible thing in the world as opposed to just beds and couches. Yeah. And so it's not a, it's not a small lift. Um, usually, I don't talk too much about investors, but you guys, you have Kleiner Perkins <laughs> and Ashton Kutcher and, and Mike Arrington or something like yeah. that. Well, yeah, we've got an amazing list of investors. Um, I mean, from Kleiner in our last round to our seed round was really like what I think of as like an Ocean's Eleven seed round, right? It was like Naval and Ron Conway and Ashton, the Groupon founders. Like, all, we had an amazing group of people who participated in our Paul Bukite actually at Y Combinator yeah. as one of our investors. Um, and I think part of it is because like this is an idea that's like actually very old. Like the idea we're working on is something that not just like into the internet people have wanted to do. People have wanted had this idea like wouldn't it be nice if I could just say what I wanted and like say how much I'm willing to pay and get it from people around me for thousands of years. Uh, but it's newly possible because of mobile phones, because of location-based services and ubiquitous mobile data and mobile payments. All of these things we're at the intersection of. Um, it, it's. Um, we're riding like four massive macro trends and like there is a hundred percent chance that someone's going to build a massive company in this space like our generation's eBay or a better and new like improved version of Craigslist like that company is going to be built and um, uh, we happened to kind of hit it at the right time and had a nice network of people and that's uh, you know everybody's trying to find the next big home run. Very few people who are on my show talk about building a company. Where does that come from? You know, because <laughs> most people are just trying to struggling to get noticed and get you know get a, a new idea out there. Or, yeah. You're, very few people talk about building a company. The great ones, I think, do. Well, you know, it's all I think about is building a company. I think um, you know we build a great product and make our users happy. Um, but who cares if you're not like building a company that's going to matter? This is my fifth company, and I've probably worked with I don't know 500 to a thousand startups. And as I mean, as as many you know billionaires and successful entrepreneurs as anybody, because I used to work in the world of philanthropy and. Um, I think like what I really started to appreciate is that uh, if you don't take building the company as seriously as you take building the product, uh, it's really, really hard to build a lasting thing that matters. And we're not playing for an acquisition. Like we are actually trying to build a multi-billion dollar company that will be generational. And I don't know, I don't know if it's going to work or not yet. Honestly, I mean, we're a baby. So company. if eBay offered you five billion dollars today, you would turn that down. Uh, today, do definitely, those? definitely today we would. Yeah. How, how does an entrepreneur? get to that point where he, he can turn down any any price, you know? Because, uh, like, we, we've heard of the, these stories before, Evan Williams at Twitter. Sure. And, you know, I, I think all um, great ideas get offered, you know, uh, 
Zuckerberg if sure. Facebook got offered billions of dollars for his company? It sounds like a little crazy on the one hand. Like on the other hand, um, I think you know we're lucky. We're getting to work on a company that like everyone who works in the company believes is going to really matter. And it doesn't just matter because like people hear about you or whatever if you're successful. Like we actually create new jobs from the ether when this thing works. Like. W like the perfect world, like at scale, what Zarly enables is like no excuses employment for anyone who wants it. And that is like a hugely powerful concept that like people get geeked about, right? Like we're a technology company and we get to be in magazines and all that, which is like lovely as a part of the ride. But the truth is that like this is one of these things that could actually have like a material impact on the way the economy works. And um, it can be a great force for good or it can be something that really, really gets corrupted. And um, uh, you know, it's time for this, like, right? Craigslist is not the marketplace that it should be, and um, there are ways to do it better. And I think across the entire company, we're 38 or 39 people now, that's why people come to work at Zarly, like, because they think this matters, not because they think that we can, like, make a quick, like, 50 million bucks or something. That's also something that uh, the great uh, leaders talk about is making something that matters. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Rackspace's chairman, uh, Graham, talks about that all the time. If you give people a mission, you, you get more out of them, you yeah. get more loyalty, more, more of everything. Yeah, right? well, this company and wouldn't exist, right? Like, the last thing that I needed to do was go and start a company, right? Like, these things are hard, right? They're hard and they're crazy and you have to deal with people that you want to deal with sometimes and it's like, you, you're biting off something that isn't going to take like six months or 12 months or 24 months to go and nail. Um, so you better believe in what you're doing, right? Like, there was no, I mean, in all seriousness, like, I have probably seen, let's say it was 500 companies, like, come through my door when I was, like, working at Kaufman. I never once even was tempted to go and work on one of those companies. Um, and then this thing happened, and I literally decided in the course of a weekend that, like, I was all in, and we were going to go and build this thing. And it's because of impact. It has nothing to do, actually. It, it, it really has nothing to do with money. Like, if we create impact, like, money will come. And um, marketplaces in particular, pretty easy to monetize. Don't worry about that. This is not, like, a how do you monetize the social graph this is yeah. about like how do you facilitate transactions that make everyone super happy and if we get that right like this thing will matter first and then secondarily like some people will make some money on it where did the idea come from uh, I was sitting in an airport like two years ago with my wife <laughs> and I was sitting at a gate and I wanted someone's exit row seat on the plane and I couldn't come up with a good way to get that message out to the people who were around me who were all sitting there staring at their phones and so I just wrote a little note in my iPhone that said like I wish someone would pitch me on a hyper local marketplace where you could make offers to the people around you and then I just sat on it. I didn't even think about it again really for a year and a half. I just kept waiting for someone to pitch it to me and nobody did. And then I went to a startup weekend in LA last year. We just turned a year old actually. Um, so it was February of, of 2011 and I listened to 30 pitches and I didn't fall in love with any of them. And so I went there to be a judge and instead I decided I was gonna pitch an idea and it turned into Zarly literally that night. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been wild. And so, so you just decided to pitch at, at Startup Weekend? I was literally the last person to pitch of the night. I was sitting in the front row did listening. You win, did you win the contest? Yeah, yeah, we won. We won <laughs> you know, it was a funny one because we realized on Saturday um, that we didn't actually care if we won. We cared that we'd actually stumbled upon something that we could not talk ourselves out of. And me and both my co-founders, like we've both done many startups before and we're good at talking people out of their stupid ideas. And we kept trying to talk each other out of this stupid idea. And like, we couldn't do it, right? And, and the more we started pushing on it, the more it just kept looking bigger and bigger and the opportunity was, was more important and more important to go after. And uh, honestly, by Saturday afternoon, like, which was one day in, we knew like we were going all in on this thing. I mean, it took one day. We How were not from mobile. We were not from the marketplace world. Like this is not something we did due diligence on for six months and like we were all in. Yeah. And the world heard about it right then because you you announced it public. You know, we were yeah. pitching publicly, right? Yeah, I mean, kind of. So we were we were trying to get some pre sign ups to like a landing page so that you know marketplaces like this that need density, you need some people on it for it to start working, right? No one on it means it's not interesting. Pure network effects business, right? The yeah. more people are on it, the more people get value, and so. Um, so we had some friends from just previous stuff that we'd done that had pretty big social media followings and stuff, and a couple of them ended up tweeting us out to like a few million people. And um, like Demi Moore, yeah, Demi Moore. She actually came to Startup Weekend because I'd invited Ashton, and he ended up leading our seed round subsequently. But she tweeted about us just like she heard the pitch and was like, "Oh my god, that's so awesome!" And tweeted about us. Lavar Burton, who was from Reading Rainbow yep. and Star Trek and stuff, is, was a friend of mine who I'd actually helped. He just started a new company, and I'd been helping him start that company. And he's got I don't think 1.8 million Twitter followers, and he tweeted about us. And so before we even had a product up we had like tens of thousands of people signing up to get notified when we had a product out and um, uh, it ended up being like a nice momentum kick coming out of the gate that honestly I feel like we've been riding ever since 
Tell me about getting investments, because yeah. how, how did that happen? And, yeah, and it what, happened what fast. So we raised our seed round about two days after Startup Weekend. Um, and part of it was because Ashton was there that weekend. Um, the night, Sunday night after the pitch and we won at midnight, I had three proposals for term sheets in my inbox from people who were at the event. There's a couple hundred people there who were like, hey dude, if you're gonna do this, like we'd be interested in talking to you about it. And um, two of the three were people that I'd known previously. One of them was just somebody who was there and was excited about it. And it was crazy, right? Like the night of a weekend hackathon, basically, like yeah. uh, that was kind of the reaction. And so we just started having some conversations with some people. I sent some, once I decided I was gonna do this thing, um, I sent some emails out that just said, hey guys, like I'm, I'm leaving Kaufman, um, uh, I'm gonna go do this startup. And I got a couple notes back from people who I'd worked with before who were like, hey, we don't even know what you're doing, but if there's an opportunity to participate, like we know how much you loved what you were doing before, so like we'd love to get involved. And um, it was fast, I and mean, we closed around. We closed a million dollar round three days later with with you know a pretty high profile set of angels. And then um, ten days later, we did a really terrible product launch at South by last year. Um, and we literally spent ten days building a mobile web optimized version that only worked in Safari, basically, uh, on your iPhone. And we had ten thousand dollars of transactions go through the system in twenty four hours. And it was like, oh my god, in a six block area in downtown Austin. And we were like, holy shit, this works. Right, and so then we realized we need to build a real product, and yeah. so in the subsequent two months, we just got bombarded with people who were interested in getting involved, and and really like what we found was that like the people who were calling us, it's because they saw this, and whether they knew it or not, they'd been waiting to see something like this, right? Yeah. Like it's such a clear opportunity that um, you know VCs wanted to use it. They're like, oh god, I, I'll pay an extra you know fifty bucks for somebody to do this for me, and other people like you know they had college students who were like, oh my kid could make money while they're in school, and it, like it just really really made sense, and so. The, our job was really a, a one that we were very, very fortunate to have, which was figure out who was a great fit for us. Yeah. Um, and so we had a ton of conversations in, in the subsequent few months, and then that's when we ended up bringing in Kleiner Perkins. And it's um, a pretty simple iPhone app, uh, yeah. it, and it's on uh, what iPhone? iPhone, and Android, and web. Yeah. yeah. And what what would people see when they s first sign into the yeah, iPhone? Yeah. So uh, so when you sign up on Zarly now, like you land on a page, and you know, we learned this in the process. At first, what you landed on was just a blank page that said, "Hey, you can ask for anything and say how much you're willing to pay." And what we found, like really quickly, is that that's like a paralyzing number of opportunities for people to choose from. Yeah. And so they were like, "What do you mean I can ask for anything? Like, what does ask for anything mean?" So what you see now, like the first user experience, is a list of recommended things to ask for in your area. And actually, what we just launched at this South by after kind of working on this thing for the better part of last year was the ability to customize that list on any geography we want. So like in the Rackspace building, we could create a custom list so that only people who launched here would see like, oh, Rackspace specials, and you'd click on it, and it would be things that like we know like you like or something like that, you know? Yep. And so um, it's a really powerful tool. We call it a buyer inspiration tool. But what it really is is a way for people to start getting ideas about what to ask for. Because the first user experience is check it out, see what I can do, set up my profile. We've got a pretty robust identity system in place, yep. which is- It asks uh, for my Facebook, my yeah, phone number, email, yeah. stuff Yeah, and it's like stuff that. that you can provide or not provide. It turns out the reason we built that stuff is that our sellers like demanded it. They were like, we want to tell the buyer who we are because we think it will improve our chances of being chosen. Right, it's like it's like the anti Craigslist and how we handle identity. Like people are proud of who they are and want to participate in this instead of some creepy back alley kind of like system. Yeah. Um, and so um, and so really, the first time people come, they browse around, they look at stuff. If they see something that clicks, it's like, oh my god, I would love for somebody to bring me a Tell chocolate. Tell me about cake. what people use it for. Meta Marketplace, you can ask for stuff like an eBay world, or you can ask for services and errands and things like that. So I think we were surprised on the stuff one. People buy a lot of secondhand electronics on Zarly. Used cars ended up bubbling up to be like a really big one. I'll pay five thousand dollars for a car that has less than two hundred thousand miles and runs well. Like things like we actually had to raise our limits of what you could offer because that ended up being such a big one. Um, uh, uh, like lessons, like uh, I'd love someone to teach me to make like authentic San Francisco sourdough bread, or um, I'm in, I'm out of town for the weekend and it's my birthday and I need someone to bring me a German chocolate cake that's homemade. Tell me why you're amazing at making this. So I mean, it really is all over the place. Furniture is a big one for us. Um, uh, it is it is uh, honestly weird things that we see like um, looking for entertainment for a party and I need someone who can juggle fire like people get those fulfilled we have a whole army of clowns who are on the other side of this for kids birthdays parties like it's it is a true meta marketplace more so actually than any other marketplace that has existed with the maybe exception of Craigslist because we block any illegal and illicit and adult yeah content. I was just about yeah, to yeah, ask yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can I you know because Craigslist got into trouble with that too right yeah. you know you can order uh, prostitutes and uh, yeah we're drugs. Really, we're actually really aggressive on that. Like we we built this from the very beginning. We actually built crawlers on top of like the shady 
sections of Craigslist to take all the code words out. We had a consultant who's like quite a well-known guy who used to run a privacy and security at YouTube who helped us kind of think through how to do this. And so we actually built algorithmic filters so even code words get blocked automatically and we have a manual review of everything that gets posted. Like we're trying to build like the ultimate community tool for buyers and sellers. And that is like, that means I want new moms and soccer moms and my grandfather to be able to use this thing. And if you go out there and you see creepy content, um, that's an immediate signal that like this is not the marketplace for the people who we actually really want to use this. Yeah. And so um, we're, we're really aggressive about it right now. Actually, if we're unsure about it, we block it and then contact the person and say like, hey, can you talk to me about this or whatever? And if it feels, if it feels right to us and them, then, then we'll make it available. Um, and I think we'll really continue to kind of toe a hard line there because we really want this to be like a clean, happy, open and transparent marketplace. Yeah. How did you decide on the investors? Because I, I, I know yeah. we were talking before the camera started and you said you had just a flood of people who wanted it. And this happens with every hot company. You know? Yeah. There's competition now. Uh, you know, it's, it's crazy, right? It's an entrepreneur's world right now. <laughs> it is. It? And it, it is. And it, it was last year when we raised and it is still today. Yeah. And I think it's... Um, yeah, I was at Y Combinator yesterday mm -hmm. and there was, I don't know, three, four hundred uh, yeah. uh, uh, VCs in the audience listening to 60 pitches. Right? It is an amazing time to be starting a company. And, and the, the truth is that it is because of what is possible on mobile phones. I mean, you said in the very beginning in the intro, right? Like a whole new world of possibilities has been open. Like yeah. we don't actually view this portal to the web as an extension of the internet that, that we knew, the PC internet, like in the late 90s. This creates new opportunity and possibilities that are as big or bigger than they were. You know, I think 400 million smartphones will be sold this year. Yeah. Like that is insane. Never has 400 million PCs been sold in a year, right? Yeah. Well, China Telecom was just here in, in our offices and uh, they said only 30% of uh, Chinese have smartphones. Yep. 30% of a billion people. You, yep. <laughs> Amazing, right? And so, and so, like, so just uh, in China, there's going to be huge yeah. growth in and smartphones. And so, and so, it's the the investment community gets this, and they know like there is a land rush to find great teams and great ideas and all these kind of things. And so, the way that we chose was um, we trusted like social art, like social connections, social proof. Something that investors talk about a lot, like, oh, if you know Ron Conway invests, then I'll invest, kind of a thing. It's turned out that like social proof actually works really well the other way around too for entrepreneurs, and to say that like, hey, uh, I, like I knew Naval Ravikant at Angelus like pretty well going into this, and I'd been involved with those guys like early on in starting that, and like when I said, hey, Naval, like who are the guys that you think I should be getting involved in this thing from an investment perspective? The guys that he introduced to me ended up being some of the best investors that I've ever worked with, and some of them I'd never heard of, and some of them I had. And yeah. so like that social proof goes two ways, and it ended up being really important to us. But I also am a very big believer in like you don't pick by firm, you pick by person. Yeah. And so like um, the reason that you know Kleiner was one of the last actually firms that we ended up talking to, and you know we got lots of nice term sheets and stuff, and so we had like plenty of options. And um, uh, my first meeting at Kleiner was with a guy named Chi Hua Chen, who's a partner there, who is on our board now, and who is just a total rock star. And like we personally clicked, and he saw the vision as much as anything else. And then the next set of meetings was with you know John Doerr and the you know Meg Whitman was in the room, who's on our board now, and like a bunch of hoity-toity people. And all of them like it clicked, and the questions they asked were like the questions that we cared about, and they talked about building companies like we talked about building companies. Um, but I think it was about personal alignment, right? Like, and uh, once we found that, like it was really really easy for us to kind of decide. What kind of questions should I be asking you then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kinds of I mean, things do they yeah. ask you that, yeah, that well, clicked on you? Yeah, I mean, I think you've asked actually quite a few of them. Like people always ask about illegal and illicit content like there's like things like that that I think we have like great answers for um, honestly like the things that matter to us is like like who is on our team and like who does it take to make this possible right like I've got two co-founders one of which I knew before we started this company and the other which I met at startup weekend when we started this right I would never start a company with somebody that I didn't know like that's a terrible idea but we did it and it's ended up being an amazing I feel like we won who the human uh, Ian Hunter is our CTO yeah. um, and he built he built the first two versions of Zarly pretty much by himself and he has just ended up, I, I honestly, I feel like we hit the human capital lottery. And the, the reason is because we were at Startup Weekend and there's a few hundred people there and we asked the people who owned the facility we were in, like, who's the best developer in the room? And they pointed to him. So we recruited him to be on our team thinking he was a great developer and it's turned out that like he's like so much more than a great developer. Like he's a great manager of technical resources. He is, um, he's just incredible. And we got very, very lucky. Like I would never say like pick someone in a, in a weekend and then go start a company with them. But like, by the time we were raising money, like we'd started to figure this out. Like this is a guy that we wanted to be working with and who, who could help make us successful. And the investors who I loved are the ones who said like, hey, we'd really like to sit down and spend some time with the team. We wanna know who's in this and who on the end of that were like, dude, we love your team. Not like, 
hey, we really like what you're doing. We think you're a good CEO for this, but we, want, we think you should bring in a new guy here. That was like an immediate turnoff for me when we yeah. were first doing it because like I have full trust in these guys and that's, um, it, is a, it is the best co-founding relationship I could possibly imagine with both my co-founders. Very cool. I could talk to you for hours. <laughs> it's not very often that I get to spend time with somebody who's just so interesting. Uh, where do we find more about it? Yeah, uh, I mean, so we're featured by Apple right now, um, but I mean, it's uh, where you can get the Android app on the Amazon Marketplace. That apparently it's now called the Google Play Marketplace, yep. not the Android Marketplace. Yep. Um, Zarly.com. It's like all the stuff that you can do on mobile. You can do on the web. It's Interesting. spelled a, it, the spelling is a little yeah Z A A R L Y. Where um, did that name come from? Yeah, it's a it's a derivation of the word bazaar, like a Middle Eastern bazaars, which are like one of my favorite places in the world. And the reason we love it and it's so applicable to us is it's the ultimate form of high velocity commerce, and anything that you want that's in a bazaar, you can get into a deal and, and make it happen. And that's kind of like our vision for what Zarly makes possible. Like, you know, if you could imagine like where we're sitting right now, like in downtown San Francisco, all the walls of everything around you disappear and you can just see what's there and kind of name your price for it and then kind of start, th start the negotiation. Um, that's like what we make possible without actually like getting a wrecking ball to rip down all the walls. So it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's ended up being like a good name for us. People, people get it. So cool. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. For coming thank you. Out. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you.